Looks like I'll be switching back to Adobe soon. This is the beginning of the end. We've seen this before. Don't you dare replace the single purchase method with this. So the subscription model you swore never to do. Just please don't turn into Adobe. This shouldn't be making me as nervous as it's making me. Sounds more like the thin edge of a nasty wedge. We're already looking at Resolve alternatives and this will now pause consideration of Resolve specific hardware. You lot never listen, no. Beginning of the end. I don't believe there is not some idiot who pushes it into pure subscription later. The reason I use and will consider paying for the full version of DaVinci Resolve Studio is because there is no subscription model. Adobe ruined their reputation by this greedy stance of milking their loyal customers. Hint, fire whoever is in charge of this decision. I honestly feel like Adobe gave a generation of video editors drama when it comes to anything around pricing and video editing software. On September 3rd, Blackmagic Design shared, introducing a new way to rent DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now individuals can rent a DaVinci Resolve Studio license within Blackmagic Cloud using their personal profile. This makes it easy to bring in extra help on smaller projects by renting a license for a short time. And as you heard, people had thoughts. Now I am making this video to clarify some things for I guess all of those people. And there were some people who had a little bit more um, rational response, especially in some like professional groups I'm in who like knew, knew some of the things I'm gonna be sharing today. But a lot of people just saw this headline and thought, oh no subscription. And that is not what this is for several reasons. Important fact number one, this is not new. This is a change in how like a specific system kind of worked, but this ability to rent DaVinci Resolve licenses was rolled out at NAB 2024, well over a year ago. Here's the clip from that live stream from April 12th, 2024. Uh, now we have some really big powerful updates for Blackmagic Cloud this year. This is for obviously large broadcasters, but also for high end post-production. We've been working really hard on these features. Now one of the features is rental licenses. And this is for the full DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now, I'm not a big fan of paying for cloud licenses for creative software. You know, it locks up the archive of your work unless you keep paying, but large customers need it. You know, they can't purchase software because they can't manage the licenses. Plus large companies have complex accounting departments. They don't want to buy licenses because they've got to manage them as assets. Uh, they've got to manage where they are, um, dongles and, and license keys. So what they do is they need, and also they need to cost the license cost against the show or the film. Uh, so rental licenses are also faster to get up and running. With rental licenses, you can like spin up 100 new licenses in seconds, and then they can cost those licenses against the show. They can cancel the, the licenses when the show's finished, or they can add and remove uh, staff from you know, as they like. So for large companies, rental licenses are actually quite simple. Now, the good thing about DaVinci Resolve is you can still buy it outright. Uh, so this means that the, um, the rental licenses really complement the paid licenses. You'll never have to worry about locking up your work. Um, if someone assigns you a license via Blackmagic Cloud, then you don't need to enter the license key. Um, you just enter your Blackmagic Cloud ID and the software will just work. So, and then of course, if you don't have the license anymore, then you can just use a paid version. You know, it's up to you. So I think that's the most flexible way we can do it while also making large customers happy. This video is brought to you by my new plugin for DaVinci Resolve, Proto V3. High energy distortion and glow effects, tons of control and 25 built-in presets that you can apply to text, shapes, images, video, tons of stuff, both a generator and effect version for the edit page, or you can open up right in Fusion for the most flexibility. It even has incredible features like built-in tracking. Check out the link in the description to learn more about Proto V3. So as you heard, this was primarily a feature for large companies, larger productions who just in the way they do business, it makes more sense for them to have regular fees like renting this large batch of software over managing those actual like physical licenses, not physical, but like on a card or like that inventory. That's very far removed from everything I'm aware of. Uh, but if that's a user base using Resolve and that's a legitimate need, that makes a lot of sense. But while that was their sort of main audience for that, Anyone could do this, and I know this because I did. After this was available, I went, I made my own organization on the Blackmagic Cloud website, and it was just like a one-person organization. You have an account when you sign up for Blackmagic Cloud, that's a free account, by the way, and I pretty much said, okay, make like a little organization for just me, and then it allowed me to rent licenses. I did this specifically because I wanted to test whether I could log in with the Blackmagic ID on both desktop and iPad 
and sort of unlock DaVinci Resolve Studio on iPad using that login because the only way to get Resolve Studio on iPad is to like go through the App Store because it's like a separate charge and all that other stuff. That didn't work. Um, iPad is still its own thing. It only worked on desktop, but I kept that subscription um, going for probably a few months more than I should have just because I forgot about it. But I tested it out and yeah, in the field where you enter normally uh, your license key when you boot up DaVinci Resolve Studio, you can just use your Blackmagic account and if there is a studio license rent a link to that account, it just runs Studio. This has been an option for well over a year. All this new update is doing is removing that little extra hurdle of needing to do this through an organization. If I hop over to the Blackmagic Cloud website, some things have changed here. There is still an organization for people who like want to go through that step, but now, or I guess we need it, but now we just have license manager right here. If I click that, we just have a license page. And if I click add, I can get a pop-up here, and which now uh, sort of like syncs um, this rental license option with all the other cloud project or product options, right? So if you want raw storage, you can do that up to you know an insane degree if you want specific project libraries or DaVinci Resolve rental licenses. And if you add one here, then back on this license manager, uh, once you add it, it'll be here and then you can assign it just to your personal account. It is worth specifically calling out um, that these rental licenses are a flat 30 USD a month. I'm not sure um, if this is something that matters, you know, where you are in the country or even if this is available more places than even purchasing it might be. I'm not sure, maybe this is a move towards accessibility in that regard, who knows? But point number one, this has been around for a while. Nothing else drastic has changed in that time. So, you know, this probably isn't the beginning of the end. I say nothing else has changed in that time, but we have got some more information at NAB. This year, we got sort of like a now infamous uh, new clip from Grant Petty uh, saying this. So DaVinci Resolve 20 is a free is free to download. The paid version of DaVinci Resolve Studio is also free. We'll probably eventually charge some kind of upgrade for this, but for the moment we're still doing the DaVinci Resolve Studio upgrade free. Um, now we have a public beta you can uh, that you can download now, and then you can try out all these new features. So it's pretty cool. So with that sort of floating around in more people's memory, maybe it makes a little more sense that some people are a little nervous, a little hesitant about any news having to deal with monetization. But if and when that change in monetization for Resolve comes, um, th that will be that will be something different than what we've got here. And when that change comes, I don't think it will be a subscription. Why? Because again, of stuff Grant Petty has said. We're going this time to uh, an interview he did with Forbes. I believe there's a clip out there of like a past NAB conference or something. I, I couldn't find it. It's very similar to this interview clip I wanted to share. Maybe I'm blurring them together in my mind. Uh, but in this interview, um, he did say, cloud licensors are like slumlords, he gripes, referring to the competition Adobe and Avid. You have to keep buying from me, and the more you're loyal, the more you'll get penalized. It's like your dog does something nice and you beat it with a stick. Whoa. <laughs> and super important here, Grant Petty, this guy, is just in charge of Blackmagic Design and therefore DaVinci Resolve. Blackmagic Design is a private company. I believe, based on other interviews, I'm pretty sure this is true, they've never taken outside funding. They've at least always been profitable since starting as a company, and you know, they just do what they wanna do. Sometimes that's confusing for customers, or sometimes it takes them a little bit longer to get to like some things that one corner of uh, the customer base wants, but I don't know, look at the results. Look at what Black and Magic Design has done by just prioritizing the things they want to prioritize. They've built a successful company that's still done really, really cool stuff and made Resolve for free. <laughs> as long as Grant Petty is at the helm, I'm not going to be too doom and gloom about uh, any change that could be coming down the way. I am not expecting a hard pivot for DaVinci Resolve anytime soon because of the track record I've observed. But the last point I do want to make is about verbiage. DaVinci Resolve calls this a license rental. And I've seen some people, maybe only a comment or two, but I've seen some people being like, oh, they're calling it a rental to hide the fact it's a subscription. When like calling it a rental 
is way more honest. It's a license rental. You get the thing while you rent it, and then you don't have access in anymore. You're not subscribing to something that you might have access to, but if you cancel early, maybe there's a funky like clause in your license agreement. You're not purchasing a product that's really just like a digital license that at some point in the future could be revoked. We just saw some like recent stuff change like with how like Steam is labeling like their game purchases. By calling this a license, I think, uh, Resolve and Blackmagic are being like upfront as they can be about what this thing is. They're not even giving you the option to buy for a whole year. It's purely month by month. We saw in the clip um, that use case for those larger companies, the one use case um, shared directly by, by Blackmagic Design in this change was making it easier to bring on extra help for smaller projects. That's valid. There are other valid use cases. If you are using the free version of Resolve, and maybe you're comfortable with just a one month trial period to see if Studio does what you want it to do, and then you'll buy the full price, and at that point you're only paying 30 bucks extra to kind of try it out. Or maybe you are satisfied with the free version of Resolve, but then you have one specific project that like, hey, you really want to use Magic Mask just on this one project, and then you probably won't need it again. If you can rent a license to Studio, you can save 90% on DaVinci Resolve for that project. Obviously, you know, there's a point at which the math balances out. You don't want to rent forever. If you're just a person using Resolve, buy a license. Like I said, if there is a point when any type of monetization for DaVinci Resolve Studio changes, we'll talk about it then, but I am not worried leading up to that change. We'll deal with it when it comes. Um, I'm of the opinion that when it comes, it probably won't be that egregious because of the track record I've seen from Black Magic Design and sort of, you know, sort of what they're all about. Did you see this announcement? What do you think? Did you already know that this has actually been an option for a little over a year? And what use case would appeal to you of like maybe, maybe renting for a short period? I do think this advertised use case of like bringing on help for a project. I think that makes a lot of sense, especially if you're using it with like the Blackmagic Cloud ecosystem. If you're on studio, someone else wants to work in that project, they can be on studio. I think there are valid reasons this could make sense for those people. And for everyone else, nothing has changed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.